when any of Mark's financial forecast for Ginkgo Bioworks ever come true, you know, Mark, I have to say, you know, like I, like I said in another video, but I'll reiterate here because people in this, in today's society, they have a short, they have a sh very short attention span and they're always moving on to the next hot thing. But you know what, Mark, you know, I'm just a low peasant from Cornell, you know, I don't know as much about the business and the ins and outs of the funding situation and everything like you. But Mark, you know, I can just say from my perspective and, you know, from from my from my position as a low peasant compared to you as one to someone at MIT, you know, a lot of your predictions, they seem like dead wrong, Mark, like completely wrong. Like, you know, you could hit me in the head and I would still come up with a better prediction than you. You know, and I don't know what it has to do with Mark. You know, maybe Jason, he's hypnotizing you on the side. And, you know, Jason, he's he's making you he's making you to say this and that and this and that and completely, completely over project everything so that you guys can, you know, give your give your investors and your other people who are investing in freaking Ginkgo Bioworks a good time, you know, and you can make them feel better and go to sleep at night very peacefully knowing that this foundry, which is going to supposedly scale up synthetic biology and perform some revolution, you know, will never happen. It's like, you know, one time my sister, she was mad at my dad or whatever, and she was crying. And, you know, she said that there was going to be some revolution. And, you know, 10 years later or more than 10 years later, there still hasn't been no damn revolution. So, you know, anytime somebody says it's going to be a revolution, you know, I'm very, I'm very skeptical, you know, not just because my sister, she said it, but, you know, because a lot of people, they say that, you know, a lot of people who are peddlers of generality, they say about, oh, there's going to be a revolution when there's really no revolution in sight and that they're just trying to get some of that money. Because I know you've been selling a lot of those stock options, Mark, you know, you're a rich man, you know, you got, you got, you know, you, you, you always dress up with those nice suit jackets and, you know, you make all these wrong and completely misguided financial forecast and you know who suffers mark not you mark or not anybody on your team who is making all these faulty financial predictions in the first place it's the actual people who are working and who you're not even telling the truth about the whole situation to look mark i really i really want to see what you're going to say if ginkgo bioworks eventually has to enter some unprecedented financial uh, other, another set of unprecedented financial difficulties or unforeseen financial difficulties and whether you guys have to actually enter some funding round because if you guys have to go in some funding round dude you don't have a good rap sheet dude you know you don't have a good sheet for actually demonstrating to investors that you deserve more capital you look you guys have been burning hundreds of millions of dollars and you guys have been awarding so many hundreds of millions of dollars probably also on top of that in stock options even if I remember correctly, in the 2022 or 2023 fiscal year, you guys awarded like 42 or 43 million in stock options. Why didn't you guys wait or actually see more of how the company was going to do before you and Jason had decided that it was such a bright idea to announce all this change in terms of service of agreement? You know why, Mark? Because you're a smart man, Mark. I know you're bright because you went to MIT. You know, you you guys knew that once you guys change all those terms and service of condition, everyone's going to panic out and they're going to wish that they never even gave you guys a penny in the first place. You know why, Mark? Because in the biotech industry or in any other type of industry, whether you want to, you know, if you want to run a business and a company fairly and ethically, you don't change the terms of service of agreement when you guys are already 15 years in. You guys should have thought of that maybe like five years in, you know, even because Jason is slow to make this change, maybe even 10 years in would have been better. But you guys, you guys wait until 15 years, 15 whole years to actually make this change. And I think that it's very dishonest because why did you guys feel to make this change in the first place if you're all of a sudden waking up out of bed and hitting your head on the ground and you're saying, oh, huh, you know, why are all these people not wanting to use our foundry? Oh, you know, maybe if we stop playing hardball with them all the time and stop trying to insist on downstream value share in those freaking royalties, maybe we would actually be able to attract more people and not play this tough guy game about how we have we're, how we have the rights to all of their intellectual property. Look, Mark, you know, you're a businessman, so let me break this down for you because as a low peasant from Cornell, you know, look, when you're using biological data or other types of sequences, a lot of those types of sequences with high homology or high degree of similarity can be found online somewhere. You can either look maybe if you're looking at a paper from a group that's identified some optimal performance of an enzyme or some metabolic process that you want to study further. 
a lot of times you can maybe introduce one or two modifications to whatever the sequences that they have. And if you have a high enough throughput experiment, you can identify those sequences on your own mark. You don't need to drive all these people crazy with all this stuff about downstream value share and intellectual property and royalties because you guys at Ginkgo were harping about this whole thing about royalties for years. You guys are the Apple store. You guys aren't Apple. You know, you guys don't have that power in the marketplace, okay? You know, the biological, you know, the biotech industry is struggling now, Mark, and you're just sitting in Ginkgo Bioworks in your nice air-conditioned office every day and just making all these completely wrong financial financial projections. You know what, Mark? I want to see in the next update that you give for Ginkgo Bioworks, what's going to be the expected delay to the growth of the revenue ramp? Because you know what? You guys, you guys are always very ambiguous in whatever financial goals you guys seek. In the previous update that you guys gave like three or four weeks ago, you guys mentioned that due to, oh, another set of unforeseen difficulties. Like that's such a surprise with you guys at this point. You guys expected a slower than expected growth in the revenue ramp, but you guys didn't even specify what's the extent to how much the revenue growth is going to slow down. Another point and thing that you just you just avoided to completely say, Mark, you know why? Because you're, you're thinking about the head. But you know why you're thinking ahead? You're thinking ahead for your pockets right here, Mark. That's what you're thinking ahead about. And that's also what Jason is thinking ahead because you know that if you guys say that, oh, we expect this much of a percentage decrease to the expected revenue ramp, then you guys, if it, ex if it actually turns out to be worse than that, you guys are going to get, you know, the investors are going to like take you guys down and they're going to bombard you with questions about why didn't you guys expect certain aspects of the revenue to grow like you expected or what happened. So you guys are just playing it safe. And I commend you, Mark, for that. You know, you and Jason are real smart. You guys are a real smart couple. You know, you guys are a good couple in the biotechnology industry, a couple of business business executives. And, you know, you guys, you guys, you know, you guys, you guys. I don't even know how to say it, but you know, without going crazy on YouTube, because I don't want to say anything like really rude or I don't know, crass, but you guys defrauded people out of a lot of money, Mark, okay? You guys are continuing this type of operation and you guys don't even know whether you'll even break even for God's sake. I don't understand how you guys can operate a business. Like, look, if I need to operate a business or go into my job, like how I had in a biotech job as a computational biologist and a data scientist, I need to have deliverables like, you know, deliverables that I'm going to get from running these algorithms and get these lists of sequences. You guys don't even deliver on anything. You guys deliver on poor and faulty financial forecasts. And then you guys just continue to expect people to buy up on this and continue investing. Mark, you know, it's best if you guys stay out of the fundraising round or the fundraising environment, like Jason said, because people are they're going to see all these videos on my damn YouTube channel. And then they're going to know that you guys aren't about nothing.